He was an 18th century Swedish scientist who made breakthroughs in physics, anatomy, and brain research. He was a religious visionary whose works have inspired writers such as Balzac, Blake, Emerson, and Strindberg. His life was a relentless quest to discover the divine master plan. He was Emanuel Swedenborg, the man who had to know. opened my eyes. I have seen things which lie deeply concealed in man. During his last years, Swedenborg lived in simple rented rooms in London, attended by his maid, Elizabeth Reynolds. A frequent caller here was Reverend Arvid Ferelius, a pastor of the Swedish Lutheran Church. I held my hands together and prayed, and then I answered, the Lord knows better than I will do so, said he. I found my name signify Elizabeth. Love me in reality or... Good day, Elizabeth. Fell again into a state. Your reverence. What can it be? Baron Swedenborg is attending guests. Jesus Christ. No, your reverence. Baron Swedenborg is quite alone. Hmm? He's been at it, speaking this way and that for three days and nights now. Hasn't eaten, hasn't slept, hasn't come out of his chamber at all. Purified me. Well, could you please tell him that whereas I hadn't seen him in church in several weeks, I had wished to inquire as to... Ferelius, please join me. Good sir, I do not wish to intrude. Now, please join me. Please be seated, my friend. Thank you. How have you fared these last weeks? I have been tormented for the past ten days and nights by wicked spirits. Wicked spirits? Yes. Now, I'm in the presence of good spirits, and they have revealed to me many wondrous things. Perhaps you would find peace if you were to attend our church services more regularly. Perhaps. But I find no peace in church on account of the spirits who contradict much of what the minister says. My friend, I have come to offer you comfort and relief from these fantasies which vex your soul. Sir, I am well aware that many will say that no one can talk to spirits and angels as long as he still lives in the body, and that it is a fantasy. By all this, I am not deterred, for I have seen, I have heard, and I have felt. Swedenborg analyzed these experiences with a scientific attitude befitting an 18th century gentleman of the age of reason. The aristocracy of 18th century Europe. Some lived in a world of Rococo frivolities. For others, it was the age of reason the Enlightenment. It was an era that turned from religious dogma to rational thought and science. Swedenborg, born in Stockholm in 1688, grew up in this world. An honors student at Uppsala University, he was skilled in nine languages. As heir to his father's title, Baron Swedenborg was an active member of the Swedish House of Lords. A versatile inventor, his designs include a glider aircraft, the first known vehicle to incorporate aerodynamic principles necessary for flight. Appointed royal assessor of mines in 1719, Swedenborg helped establish the sciences of metallurgy and crystallography. Swedenborg mastered all the sciences. He published over 70 treatises in Latin on subjects from astronomy to zoology. He anticipated many later findings, such as the molecular basis of magnetism and the nebular origin of planetary systems. But Swedenborg never considered science an end in itself. I was introduced to the natural sciences, and I studied them for 30 years. 
Thus I was prepared to understand the things which lie deeply concealed in man and serve as an instrument for laying them bare. Swedenborg began this quest with an exhaustive study of human anatomy and physiology. His many findings include the discovery of the function of the endocrine glands. But by the 1740s, he focused all of his research on a single subject, the human brain. He was first to discover the synchronous action of the brain and lungs, the functions of the cerebellum and pituitary, the thinking and memory areas of the cerebral cortex, and the integrative action of the nervous system. By all your many sciences and studies, you have been of great service to the learned doctors and physicians. So why should you concern yourself with spirits and such things? These are matters best left to the church. The single purpose of my studying anatomy was to search for the seat of the soul in the body. For the soul is represented in the body, which is its mirror. But he would not find the soul by dissecting the brain. The purely intellectual approach, the methodology of the age of reason, would not suffice. Swedenborg had to go beyond the intellect to experience the soul directly. Swedenborg continued his search for the soul by exploring the mysteries of his own mind. For years, he analyzed his dreams and visions, compiling one of the most complete records of inner experiences ever assembled. Swedenborg also developed a meditation technique for probing his own subconscious. Although he was probably unfamiliar with Eastern meditation, his techniques were similar to those of yogis and other Asian mystics. The monks and saints of Asia, they all turned within, striving to go beyond the individual personality to the universal core, the soul. And Swedenborg, like the great visionary saints, was to experience a transformation. It occurred one April evening in 1745. Twice, a vision of Jesus appeared to Swedenborg and instructed him to change the course of his life. Make me worthy of thy grace. And you believe he was actually before you, in your very room, Yes, and from that day forth I gave up the study of worldly sciences and I labored in spiritual things. The Lord opened my eyes so that I could see in the middle of the day the other world and in the state of perfect wakefulness converse with angels and spirits. Swedenborg treated these angels and spirits as reflections of his own subconscious. For example, he believed that an angel in a vision or dream corresponds to that which is angelic within ourselves. A demon corresponds to that which is demonic. And he developed a system to interpret this kind of imagery, which he called correspondences. The Bible. Swedenborg discovered in many passages symbolic imagery similar to that of his dreams and visions. And he recognized that these symbols were correspondences, divinely inspired guides to human psychology and the soul. For example, the opening passages of the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth can be translated in the beginning, we are each created with spiritual realities, symbolized by heaven, and material needs, symbolized by earth. As we evolve, 
we learn to strike a balance within ourselves, integrating heavenly and earthly concerns. This evolution culminates symbolically on the sixth day with the creation of Adam, who represents wisdom, and Eve, who represents love. The union of wisdom and love leads to the psychological wholeness, the inner peace, represented by the seventh day, the day of rest. Each of the other images in the story of creation, creeping things, fish, beasts, represents a stage in the evolution of human consciousness. Genesis, when viewed in the light of correspondences, becomes an ageless model of man created in the image and likeness of God. For man is the microcosm, the universe in miniature. All things which exist in the created universe have such a correspondence with all things of man that it may be said that man is a kind of universe. Swedenborg had at last found the gateway to the soul in the hidden meanings of the Bible. He published many volumes of his interpretations anonymously, signing them simply, A Servant of the Lord. But his visionary activities were becoming famous because of certain psychic talents he had acquired during his long journey within. Many reports survive of Swedenborg's predicting future events, having clairvoyant visions, and relating information known only to dead persons. Mrs. William Castell witnessed the best documented of Swedenborg's clairvoyant visions. It occurred at a dinner party attended by Swedenborg and 15 other guests at her home in Gothenburg, Sweden, in 1759. I noticed he pushed his plate aside and became much more agitated. And I inquired again if there was anything I could do. Well, he stood up and soon began talking and telling us about a fire in Stockholm. Stockholm? But Stockholm is some 300 miles distant from your home in Gothenburg. Yes, but he described in every detail how the fire began, the buildings it was consuming, how it was finally extinguished just two doors from his house. This was on Thursday, Saturday, a messenger came from Stockholm and we learned that every detail Swedenborg had told us was true. Well, people of all sorts then became curious. But even in Germany, the German philosopher Immanuel Kant sent a personal representative to interview me. Indeed. And it is told that Swedenborg has visited heaven and hell. But of course, that is a matter. Really, madam, this is a subject I care not to discuss. I am a good Christian. All of my family are good Christians. And we accept with perfect faith that which the church teaches us regarding the matters of the afterlife. I'm sure you understand. Oh, of course. I quite understand.